everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Um, on this edition of Foodie Friday, we're making a lentil soup um, that I had mentioned. So this one's going to be a lentil and quinoa soup. So it's literally going to be one of those uh, complete, uh, complete meals in a soup. And I spared you um, the long waiting of um, roasting vegetables and things like that. But if you follow me on Instagram, uh, just search for me at fat to fit for life spelled out. I do post sometimes uh, little meal prep things here and there that you can watch. Um, and also if you have any questions, feel free to slide into my DMs on there and also message or comment on this video. I, and if you want, I can leave details of all that. So the first steps of this, which I did post on the Instagram, um, the Instagram, <laughs> are roasting the vegetables at 350 degrees. Just put some foil under your baking dish to save on cleanup time. And um, I did red onions, white onions, tomatoes, um, some seasoning, uh, garlic powder, fresh garlic's obviously better, but I did not have any, so garlic powder is fine. A few herbs, um, I think I used oregano, and I did not salt anything when it was roasting. Oh, and turmeric and black pepper. Um, and then one lemon cut in half roasted. So I roasted that until the vegetables were a little charred and a little bit, um, you know, cooked. The tomatoes were roasted. Took that out, let it cool. Once I let it cool, and make sure please let your vegetables cool before doing this step. Uh, once I let it cool, I put all the contents into a blender um, container with a little bit of water and blended it to get this uh, creamy consistency that you see here. So this is all the vegetables now blended and here and then I brought it up to temperature. So please do not do this step when the vegetables are hot. I, speaking from experience, it's not fun. Um, so this was cooled when I did it, blended it, then put it and brought it up to temperature and I'm able to not use oil because there's my base. Now here I have a mixture of all different, these are all carrots, so it just happens to be yellow and white and um, orange, what I have left over of my rainbow carrots. I'm adding that and you know what, yes you could chop all the vegetables. Um, you know, in perfect sizes, and so they cook, con I don't know, consistently and whatever. But I'm not a chef, I don't claim to be, um, and I, my knife skills are not, you know, 100% on point, and I really don't care, because it, it's, it's all going into the same place, and it's going to be delicious, so. Um, now, all these carrots are added. Mind you, we all have different preferences when it comes to soups. So if you like your consistency of your soup to be runny, add more water. If you like it to be thicker, add less water. I have some water um, coming to a boil here in case I need more water, which of course I will, because I haven't added the lentils or the quinoa yet, and those expand and definitely need moisture. So here, this is all coming up to temperature, and you really don't have to wait to add anything. I've rinsed a half a cup of quinoa and one cup of lentils here. That may seem like a lot, but I'm making a lot of soup and it'll be for a week's worth or whatever, so I can do it, you know, I don't have to cook more than once, basically. That's here, please make sure you rinse your quinoa, even if it says not rinse on the package, the quinoa's under here. I'm adding that and I'll show you when I want to add it. And the reason I say to rinse the quinoa is because sometimes it has like this bitter film on top and it kind of can ruin a dish and make it taste bad when quinoa really doesn't have a bad taste. It just, so there's the quinoa and the lentils added in. I'm gonna give that a stir. Now the seeds, now, oh, and let me tell you something else. The lemon roasted, oh my God, it's amazing. It makes the, the, um, the insides of the lemon so, um, I don't know, somehow a little sweeter, juicier, and it goes and it, um, basically is able to be blended or put into this so easily so you have that nice tart taste of lemon you have garlic powder in here if you had fresh garlic use it I'm gonna add a few um, dried herbs to this and also cumin cumin is a key flavor in this one and remember I'm trying to recreate the Trader Joe's um, lentil and ancient grains recipe 
Um, and it's not really like that I have a recipe. I just bought it from Trader Joe's and I liked it. So I'm trying to recreate it. And that's the beauty of the internet. You can look up anything. You can tweak recipes to whatever you like. Don't make any excuses about not cooking because it's literally as simple as sometimes following a recipe until you get it. Now I'm, I'm happening to add um, Zat Zatar, Zatar, not sure how to say it. But I bought this at um, Chelsea Market and I like the... It smells good. I like the blend of it. I bought it there, but you don't have to buy it there. I just happened to see it. And uh, you can buy it at any, uh, probably any international aisle of a grocery store. Probably costs you less. And um, so I just added the Zat Zatar, Zatar uh, seasoning there. And I'm going to add straight cumin because uh, that gives it that flavor, like that smoky flavor that definitely is in the Trader Joe's soup. Now, if I can only find my cumin, that would be nice. Hold on. Okay, I guess I don't have any, which is a bummer, but I do have um, cumin or cumin seeds. Hold on one second. Okay, so let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I don't have powdered cumin so I'm going to use uh, cumin seeds and I'll show you here black cumin you could buy this also like um, any international I'm gonna use about that much I'm just gonna add those seeds in there I'm not measuring anything because I really don't measure anything uh, but I, I say just add everything to taste I'm going to add some more dried herbs, and I don't know what this is, so I have to smell it. This is from our garden. It's a little bit of um, tarragon, dried tarragon, and you can always crack in more black pepper into this. Really do whatever you like. That's why I'm giving you uh, this recipe because um, literally it's adjustable. And on the, um, if you look, that's more garlic powder, by the way. Um, if you look on online, it says that there's marjoram and all these other things in it. Oh, and this is a sumac or soma as I say it, but I'm adding some of that because it gives a little tartness. And... I think that would, oh wait, I found my cumin. I had a little bit left, <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Okay, so that's a little powdered cumin and um, and that's pretty much all I'm adding. Um, again, I'm not gonna add salt because if I need salt at the end when the soup is done, then of course anyone can add salt to taste once eating it anyone can add a little bit of a drizzle of olive oil once eating it i don't feel it's necessary for this particular recipe but feel free to adjust the recipe to whatever you like and look up flavors that you like and then do that so this is carrots lentils quinoa all those roasted vegetables blended now i'm adding the hot water that this definitely needs I'll give it a stir. Okay, so this is the consistency that I have now, which seems that it's pretty good, but who knows? Once the lentils cook and the quinoa needs about a half hour of steady simmering, you can always add more water to get it to the consistency you want. If you have it a soup-like consistency, of course you could have it all week as one of your meals. Um, as a soup, if you make it thicker, you could serve it over brown rice, you could serve it over uh, any grain of your choice. Um, you could also make this recipe with cut up potatoes. Um, you could make it with sweet potatoes. You could do a whole bunch of things. You could add some greens in here, which I will add some chopped dill, fresh dill. Give me one second. Yeah, but you don't have to do any of that. You can add whatever makes your heart happy, whatever will make your lentil soup exactly how you want it. And I know I know some people who serve their lentil soup with some vinegar, 
um, you can definitely do that. The, actually, the Trader Joe's recipe says that it has balsamic vinegar in it. Uh, I'm not adding any balsamic vinegar because if I want it, I can always add it once I serve it. And I could also keep this recipe pretty basic and then tweak it all week to make it a little bit different each time if I wish to do so, just to keep it less boring. There's the dill going in. And this, the temperature, I'll raise the temperature on it to medium until it comes to a boil and then lower it down to a simmer and let that simmer for a half hour. Or until the, the carrots reach the texture that you want and you see that the quinoa has expanded. The quinoa is this little seed and then once you see this like a little string that comes out, it's uh, not a string, it's like a little tail or <laughs> it sounds wrong to say tail but those of you who have cooked quinoa before know what I'm talking about. It kind of has this like little thing that pops out and it basically you'll know it's done. So now I'm just going to let that cook away. It doesn't need to be stirred. You don't have to hover over it, nothing. It needs nothing, it needs nothing. And it took really not long at all. Yes, there's a step of roasting the vegetables, but it helps you avoid added oil and added fat. And you're not adding salt and you're roasting the vegetables and getting all those flavors out of it just from the uh, actual roasting of it. So this will take a half hour. Once it's done, serve it as a soup, add more water if, it, if you want that add less water, you want to serve it over rice, and it's complete. I hope you enjoyed this recipe with me, and I'll give you a look of it. Look at that, looks beautiful. And once it's cooked, it'll thicken up, and it will be delicious. It smells delicious already. Mm, it really does. <laughs> I say this every time, but it really does smell delicious, and, and it looks super filling and comforting, especially on a rainy day, a cold day or any day, I don't think there's a specific time or whatever for food, it's just whatever you feel like eating. So, okay, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Like if you like the recipe, share it if you want to share it with your friends. And you can reach me on Instagram at fat to fit for life and I can answer any and all of your questions there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye.